I'm going to do a video on uh, manganese phosphate coating. Uh, I do uh, basically carburetor uh, rebuilding and uh, uh, some restoration parts work for people. And uh, all the fasteners uh, and stuff on uh, cars, carburetors, and stuff, most of them were uh, protected with uh, manganese phosphate coating, which you can see these screws. How black they are and uh, I did a couple linkage parts normally these are plated zinc but uh, it might be kind of hard to see the color difference in this video but certain steels take the coating differently like these parts here these stamp steel parts they come out a little bit lighter than the screws I, th I think it has something to do with the material you notice how really nice and black the screws came out and uh, these aren't quite as black uh, like here's a carburetor I finished and you can see all the screws fasteners you know down here these are all manganese phosphate coated and also you'll get uh, carburetors that have uh, uh, cast iron base plates, you know, Rochester two jets, four uh, G's. Uh, I think the, some of the Carters, the WC, FBs are uh, cast iron bases, and those are all uh, done with the manganese phosphate coating, you know, to protect them from rust. You know, all your steel fasteners and stuff on the cars, uh, sheet metal parts. Uh, that uh, weren't painted. They either had a, a manganese phosphate or they had a zinc phosphate, which is a lighter, lighter gray color. But they all had some type of coating. They, they weren't going to ship these parts out to the manufacturer on the assembly line. And if they didn't have some kind of protective coating on them, they'd rust. Um, I was buying this chemical uh, online. Uh, Parkerizing finishes the same stuff and I saw a couple homebrew recipes on e on uh, YouTube and uh, I started messing around with them and uh, uh, You get like mixed results. So I, I started fine-tuning You know what their basic formulas were and uh, that's what I'm going to go over and uh, and uh, We'll do some we'll make up the chemical and we'll do some parts Okay, this is my little setup here. Uh, basically, this hot plate I bought at uh, Walmart. I think it was 16 bucks or something. You know, it's got a thermostat control on it. Uh, you know, like a seal top, so if you spill stuff, it's not getting down to a bunch of coils. Uh, candy thermometer I bought there also. Okay, the main ingredients for this. Uh, mixture is uh, phosphoric acid which I purchased at uh, Home Depot under the name clean strip phosphoric prep and etch I, I think it's somewhere around about maybe 50 or 60 percent phosphoric acid um, so basically what I've, I've started out doing is I put like eight ounces of water in my hot plate you know, I'm bringing my temperature up to a, you know close to 200 degrees. The phosphoric acid I've already measured out four ounces. I'm gonna pour that in. Always try to pour the acid into water. I got that in. I'll kick my temp up. Um, the next thing you're going to need is the manganese dioxide, which I bought a pound of this on eBay. It was, it was really cheap. I think you can get it at pottery supply places. All I'm going to put in this initial brew is a half a teaspoon.
That's all I'm using right there. I'll put that in. Stuff's like graphite. You know, it gets really messy. Just keep it off you. And the uh, next ingredient I'm going to use is uh, I've got this like a four rod steel wool, and uh, steel wool will uh, have uh, like a coating on it keeps it from surface rusting. So you either got to clean it off with a lacquer thinner, soak it in there. I just put this in my glass bead cabinet, blasted it down. I'm probably using about a third of a biscuit. We're going to throw that in because that's going to dissolve in the uh, solution. And like I say, I'm going to keep this up to, you know, close to 200 degrees. And you see how it all foamed up. Reacting with the steel. See how foamy it gets. Now you're going to have to uh, keep an eye on this stuff because it's going to try to foam up. You have to cut back your heat. And the water I use is always distilled water. If your uh, temperature starts coming up too high, you can uh, knock it back with a little distilled water. And uh, basically what I'm going to do is leave this cook for a while. Okay, I've been leaving this cook. You notice uh, the steel wool is all dissolved. And uh, I've been trying to dissolve as much of the uh, manganese dioxide as I can. For some reason, it, it never gets 100%. But I, I stir it and I'm keeping the temperature up between 190 and 200. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut the heat off. And I'm going to add four more ounces of the uh, phosphoric acid. And then I'm going to leave this sit for two, three, four hours. And I'm going to leave uh, any of the sediment and all that stuff to settle down to the bottom. And then we're going to decant it off and uh, we're going to put it in our uh, our jug which is going to make up a gallon of distilled water. Okay, I've let the uh, solution after I added the last uh, bit of uh, phosphoric acid I let it cool down and I've, I've let this sit overnight. Uh, I wanted all the uh, sediment and stuff to go to the bottom. You know, it, it probably will do it in two, three hours, I would say. But uh, what we're going to do now is uh, I've got a jug of distilled water with a little bit in there. I'm going to pour that into the jug. I've got a paint filter in there. Let me uh, pour this in and see if I can do it without spilling it. This is kind of like what I got left in the bottom. You'll still see there's still some manganese uh, dioxide in there and uh, some uh, 
residue I think it was from the uh, dissolving the steel wool but uh, you don't want to pour that into the main solution and you can see what we wind up with here with our uh, our solution and now I'm going to top this off with distilled water I recommend using the distilled water because uh, you know regular water has a lot of minerals in there you can see how this stuff reacts just with iron and stuff and uh, especially I don't think you want to use water like it comes if you got soft water I'm sure the salt would have some effect on it it's a little foamy that's enough water in there and uh, basically that's what we wind up with If you notice, if you guys have bought this uh, chemical before, it's basically to color it. You get when you buy it, you know. You know, it's nice and clear, no sediment in it. This was a, a jug uh, I mixed up quite a while ago, I've been using. And uh, this is like what it. It looks like after you've used it, I've used this uh, solution here, I don't know, probably five, six times already. It still work, works fine. <coughs> but I'll also, uh, after you do parts, you'll get a lot of sediment down in the bottom of your container. Uh, I suggest you use like stainless steel uh, for your parts. And uh, after you get done using it, leave, leave uh, you know the the crap and stuff settle to the bottom and then just decant it off and filter it and uh, you know if it's running low on the water volume you can just add more distilled water okay I've uh, put the solution from the jug into the pot and uh, I've got the temperature up uh, it's pretty close to 200 um, I've got this uh, choke pull off bracket off of Rochester. I have a bead blasted it, cleaned it all up. So we're going to throw it in the uh, solution. And you can see we're starting to uh, get a reaction from it. Spoiling. We're going to leave this uh, sitting here for a while. You know, usually these small parts, uh, screws and stuff, I usually leave them in for, you know, 10 minutes, sometimes 15, depends. But uh, we'll come back in a little while and check it out. Okay, I've had this part in here about uh, 15 minutes. It seems like the chemical has almost completely stopped reacting. So I'm going to, I've got a magnet here. Pull the part out of it and rinse it. I'm going to dry it off a little. this dry a while and then we'll take a look at it okay what I've uh, done with the uh, uh, choke pull off bracket for the carburetor is uh, after I uh, uh, put the manganese uh, phosphate coating on it you know I rinsed it and uh, I put it in this plastic bag and I oiled it down with uh, WD-40 you know, most of my screws and parts and stuff like this, I'll, I usually leave them sitting there for like overnight. And then you can wipe, wipe the excess WD off. 
But this is basically how it came out. I didn't have that in the bag too long, maybe half an hour or so. Uh, you know, it came out, you know, nice and black and uh, stuff. And, you know, you can see a little variations in how the chemical bit. You know, it's a little blotchy here. I think that's all due to the surface preparation. You know, it, the finish has to be, you know, it, it would be like more pertaining to like gun guys that are, you know, doing uh, ARs and whatever. Uh, you know, the full receivers, you know, they want a, a consistent black finish. Uh, that all has to, I'm sure, has to do with the surface prep. You know, if, if your prep is consistent, uh, you know, one end to the other, I'm sure this will take just as even at one point to the other. Uh, you know, car parts, they were never that critical about this coating. They just wanted it on there uh, to keep it from rusting. Uh, they weren't concerned with perfect uniformity. And uh, basically, like I say, this chemical is, uh, is doing the job for what I do with it. Like I say, if you guys are, are doing uh, you know, guns and stuff and want to try this formula, uh, the only thing is I can say is you can mix this stuff up you know, on the cheap. Uh, you, it, it's probably costing me a dollar. To mix a gallon of this, and uh, you know, compared to what uh, you know the uh, uh, places are selling, the, you know, the, the concentrate chemical to make a gallon for, uh, you know, I've seen that stuff up to you know forty something dollars a gallon, and uh, you know, plus shipping. I think a lot of this chemical stuff is you're paying huge hazmat fees, is what drives the price up on it, but. Uh, and it actually seems like this chemical works better uh, the second time around. You know, I'll I leave this uh, uh, settle. You get flocking, what they call flocking, from doing the parts. I leave that settle, decant it off through a filter, and uh, put it in the jug, and then uh, I'll, I'll reuse the stuff. And for some reason, it seems like you know the second, third, fourth time around you're using it, the the, the better it. Uh, it uh, comes out, but uh, I'm uh, waiting on uh, some cast iron carburetor base plates. Uh, when they come in, we're going to use the bigger tank, and uh, we're going to do them, and I'll show you how the finish comes out on them. Okay, what I've done here is uh, I put the whole gallon of the uh, fresh mixed uh, uh, magnesium phosphate in the, uh, the big container because I was going to do the uh, cast iron base plate and stuff I was telling you about. Which that's, that's it here. And uh, when I put it in there it, uh, it wasn't getting as black as I like it. And like I was telling you earlier in the video it seems like this uh, solution works better after it's been used once. I, I don't know if the uh, you know steel and iron parts you're putting in there are conditioning it more or whatever. So what I did is I uh, you know I plated some uh, or I, uh, I put some uh, you know cast iron fittings in the uh, solution and stuff and and let them darken up and uh, a couple various scrap steel parts and then what I did is uh, turn the heat off let it all cool down. I filtered it into the jug, and then uh, I just went back the next day, and I've I've poured the uh, solution back in, and I'm uh, heating it back up, getting up close to 200. And like I told you, the solution, you know, will look like this when it's after it's been used once. So what I'm going to do is. Uh, I'm going to throw this uh, cast iron fitting in and we'll see how it comes out. See I'm getting a uh, pretty good reaction from it so we'll leave it in there for a bit and then uh, we'll check back on it. Okay, I've had the uh, 
cast iron fitting in here for about 10 minutes. I'm still getting reaction in there, but uh, just to make sure you see when this comes out. What's kind of looking coming out. I'm going to rinse it in the bucket. And you can see how nice and black that came out. So now what I'm going to do is uh, dry it off with some compressed air and then I'm going to oil it down with some WD. Okay, now I've got this uh, Rochester uh, two barrel off a of Pontiac Tri Power. And I'm going to put this in the chemical and see if we can get that nice black color on the cast iron. And I'm maintaining my temperature between 190 and 200. And uh, I've got the part in. It's reacting. And so we'll leave that in for a bit and uh, check on it. Okay, we've had this uh, base plate in probably for about 10-12 minutes and uh, pull it out. You can see how nice and black it is. I'm going to rinse it off. So I've uh, rinsed it off, so what we'll do is I'll air dry it and then I'll uh, put some WD on it. Also, what I use uh, for doing uh, screws and stuff is I've got this heavy walled uh, plastic jug and I've drilled a bunch of holes in it. So what I do is uh, fasteners I want to do. I've got these uh, fasteners that have been glass please. I just got a few of them. So I throw them in the, contain in the container. It's got the holes, drain holes and stuff in it, and I'll just put it in the solution. It'll fill up with the solution, and then that way I can just uh, pick it up out of here and uh, put it in the, the rinse tub. It uh, saves, saves like trying to put little wires or anything on it and uh, hanging them. But we'll leave those cooked for a while and see how they come out. Okay, I've let the... Uh, piece of cast iron that we did with the, the first time uh, oiled it and uh, you can see the nice black color it comes out and uh, also the uh, base plate for the two barrel this piece over here is an aluminum piece so it's not going to take the uh, it's aluminum plug it won't take the uh, uh, manganese uh, phosphate coating but uh, yeah, after you oil them down, you know, you wipe them down, you get a little black residue off. Uh, it's probably some excess on there after you've uh, put the oil on them. But uh, I would say for doing car parts, this is a, a good solution. But like I say, it seems like uh, after you first mix it, I would like condition it and do some scrap parts like some of these cast iron pieces and then I would uh, let the solution cool filter it off and then uh, use it again because I you know I have stuff in a jug that I've been using for quite a few months and uh, it, it works really great uh, but you know, I'm just doing you know a bunch of small parts screws and stuff uh, the screws I got I got them in my little baggie with some WD in there you see how nice and black they came out I'm going to, uh, I have this uh, Czech uh, 380 pistol, World War II era. I'm going to, uh, it, need, it needs a refinishing. Um, I'm going to try to, to uh, manganese phosphate coat this or parkerize it. And uh, I'll do a video on it. If it, if it turns out good, I'll... Uh, I'll push this solution towards the uh, gun refinishers. If it if it doesn't work out, I'll you know we'll just stick to doing the uh, the car parts with the with this homemade solution because it, uh, it it works very well. Uh, and thanks for watching and uh, look at my other stuff I have.